grace, and peace to you all. As one part of the Church of Jesus Christ, we are inspired and guided by Christ's vision of God's realm, one that includes all who seek to love God and neighbor. St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church welcomes all people, regardless of age, race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, economic situation, family status, mental or physical abilities, to become part of the membership and ministry of the church. We welcome all of each of you. We're glad that you're worshiping with us. And now, as has become our custom, I invite you to light a candle to set this screen time apart and to remind you that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, holds us together while we are apart. Let us be called to worship. God, who flung the stars into the night sky, rejoices over all creation, especially us. Come to us, laughing God, and gladden our hearts with your goodness and grace. Christ, the word of joy and life, fills all creation with hope, especially us. Come to us, brother and savior, and reclaim our hearts as your own. The spirit who breathes life into emptiness gives all creation the gift of peace, especially us. Come to us, spirit of gentleness, and refresh us with the dew of delight.
The doctrine of the Trinity is a mystery, yet we believe that God is our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. With humility, faith, and hope, we confess the things we have done and left undone, as well as the shortcomings and injustices in our society and world. Let us pray. In the mystery of creation, imaginative God, you shape beauty and goodness yet we damage it by our selfishness and anger. In the mystery of life, child of hope, you become one of us, yet all too often we turn our back on you. In the mystery of peace, breath of life, you would gentle our natures, yet we cling tenaciously to our bitterness and hurt. In the mystery of grace, holy God, you forgive us our sins that we might embrace others. In the mystery of mercy, you touch our lips, that we might speak gently to others. In the mystery of hope, you cling us as family, siblings of what the one who brought new life for all, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God is a God who sees, God who hears, God most high, God almighty. All these names remind us that God is beyond our comprehension, and yet God is deeply personal. God knows you, and God knows your neighbors. God made you, and God made us all. God loves you through good and bad times, and God will help you to turn to right paths. Go knowing that God forgives you and do the work of justice and restoration that leads to peace. Amen. for understanding and illumination as we prepare to hear the word read and proclaimed. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, giver of life, breathe into us that we may hear a word of truth this day. Draw us into the holy dance and communion with the Trinity. Enable us to love, conspire to make us one with you for the world you so deeply love. Amen. Our first scripture reading lesson this Sunday is ascribed as a Psalm of David. I will be reading Psalm 29 from the Common English Bible. Listen now for what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church today. You divine beings, give to the Lord. Give to the Lord glory and power. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bow down to the Lord in holy splendor. The Lord's voice is over the waters. The glorious God thunders. The Lord is over the mighty waters. The Lord's voice is strong. The Lord's voice is majestic. The Lord's voice breaks cedar trees. Yes, the Lord shatters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon jump around like a young bull. He makes Syrian jump around like a young wild ox. The Lord's voice unleashes fiery flames. The Lord's voice shakes the wilderness. Yes, the Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. 
The Lord's voice convulses the oaks, strips the forest bare, but in his temple everyone shouts glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood waters. The Lord sits enthroned king forever. Let the Lord give strength to his people. Let the Lord bless his people with peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second scripture reading comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a high and exalted throne, the edges of his robe filling the temple. Winged creatures were stationed around him. Each had six wings. With two they veiled their faces, with two their feet, and with two they flew about. They shouted to each other, saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. All the earth is filled with God's glory. The doorframe shook at the sound of their shouting, and the house was filled with smoke. I said, Mourn for me. I'm ruined. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people with unclean lips. Yet I've seen the King, the Lord of heavenly forces. Then one of the winged creatures flew to me, holding a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt has departed and your sin is removed. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, I'm here. Send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now a time for our children. If your teacher asks your class, who would like to be the line leader today, what happens? 
usually every kid in the class raises their hand, right? And if you're at a birthday party and the parent asks, who wants cake and ice cream? Well, duh, of course you raise your hand. In the Bible, in the story that I read, God wasn't asking Isaiah if he wanted to be the line leader or if he wanted some cake and ice cream. God was asking who would go tell the people about God and what God wants them to do and how God wants them to treat each other. And that might be a little bit scary. But Isaiah raised his hand and said, I'll do it. Send me. Our stories aren't very much like Isaiah's, but God still wants each of us to tell people about God and share with them how to love each other and how to live the way God wants us to. I hope that you will say, I'll do it. I can tell people about God's love because we definitely need more of that in our world. Will you pray with me? Dear God, Thank you for loving us. Thank you for Isaiah and the way he shared your message. Help us to say, I'll do it, and then share your love with others. Amen. Picture it. Sicily, 1912, two young girls' best friends shared three things. A pizza recipe, dough, and a dream. That is how Sophia Petrillo began many an eye-roll-inducing story on the sitcom The Golden Girls. Between Sophia's Sicily stories and Rose's tales from St. Olaf, there was almost always an applicable story for any situation. Or so they thought. Picture it, Sicily, 1920. Serafina and I were both crazy about Marco the Goat Boy. Picture it, Sicily, 1922. It was the worst of times. It was the worst of times. Sophia's formula for storytelling sets the scene. Picture it. She wants you to imagine being there. She sets the stage with the time and place so you can understand the message that she will hopefully get to eventually. Picture it, Jerusalem in the year of King Uzziah's death. That meant something. For Sophia Petrillo, it was always Sicily. For some, the significant stories we tell about ourselves might begin, picture it, Dallas, Texas, 1963. Or picture it, Atlanta, 1996. Or picture it, Richmond, Virginia, September 2001, I was just beginning my last year of seminary. So picture it, Jerusalem, in the year of King Uzziah's death. Isaiah sets the scene, the time and the place. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of the robe filled the temple. The human king had died. And Isaiah finds himself face to face with the divine king. That is the setting for the story that Isaiah tells. The story he tells is about a story he had to tell. It's the story of his call as a prophet and the message God gave him to tell the people, which just happened to be a message he, that they wouldn't want to hear. This story includes a variety of characters and voices. From the winged creatures we hear, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heavenly forces. All earth is filled with God's glory. From Isaiah we hear, Woe is me, I am a man of unclean lips. From the voice of God we hear, Whom shall I send? And finally we hear the voice of Isaiah respond, Here I am, send me. In the middle of those voices, the winged creatures cleanse Isaiah and enable him to speak. They assure him that his voice and the message he must tell are only possible because the cleansing comes from God and because God directs his speech. Isaiah's voice becomes not just 
some guy in town waving his finger, telling people what to do. It becomes a prophetic voice. This prophetic speech comes not from human insight or intelligence, but is a pure gift and mandate from God. Now, if you keep reading, you see that Isaiah wasn't just released to go and do his thing after he answered the call. He was sent to be a bearer of God's word. The word of God that Isaiah is given is a hard one. He's given a message accusing the people of self-destructive lack of receptivity to God. In response to this awesome vision of God, Isaiah is commissioned to deliver a word of judgment. Not surprisingly, Isaiah does not feel up to the task. He says he is inadequate to follow the call and preach the principles of God's justice and love. And still, God sends him to be a bearer of God's word. I imagine that most of us can relate to Isaiah's feelings of inadequacy. Sinful, finite human beings that we are, it is easy to cry, Woe is me, I am not worthy, when God gives us a prophetic word to speak. But what if we don't even hear a word from God, a call? As much as we might like to have an Isaiah-like experience with the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of the robe filling the temple, hearing the voice with clear instructions, most of us are more familiar with God's silence. And try as we might, we cannot manufacture an audible Isaiah-like encounter with the divine. But God dwells in the silence too. God is there in the silence both before and after Isaiah's call. There are many good reasons why we, contemporary followers of Christ, may not hear a call like this. Perhaps we can't hear the voice of God through all the noise in our world. Perhaps we need to clear the cacophony that obscures God's voice. The jangling of cell phones, the screeds of talk radio, the blasts of wartime, the deafening drones of leaf blowers, the constant notifications from our social media accounts, and the ugly shouts of partisan politics. When those intruders are named and cleared away, we may find that in true silence, the Holy One draws near. Because the voice of God rarely announces itself in the impossible-to-ignore way that it does for Isaiah, we sometimes miss it. And if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes we do hear it, but we try to ignore it. God calls us, whether we like it or not, and in our inadequacies and in our weakness, God gives us strength. And I wonder, what is keeping you from hearing God's call? What is keeping you from answering God's call? Last week, we celebrated Pentecost. At Pentecost, the resurrected flesh and blood Christ is gone. He is no longer walking among his people and within his church. At Pentecost, we come to understand that as Christ's people, we, the church, have become the principal avenue for God's message of God's redemptive power in human life. No longer Christ's body in the flesh bearing that message, but Christ's body, the church, bearing that message. We are living the ongoing story of God's imperatives directed at the people of God. Isaiah heard the call and shared the message. The followers of Christ listened to him, and when he was no longer with them, the church continued to share the message, enabled and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Stunned and stammering through burned lips, Isaiah yields and answers, Here I am. Send me. 
stunned and stammering sometimes, burned perhaps not by a winged creature touching a hot coal to the lips, but by our experiences. We hear and respond to God's call. When we clear out the cacophony and hear God's call, that's scary enough. But when we answer, here I am, send me, that is when the real trouble begins. We may not need our lips burned by hot coals, but maybe we need to be cleansed of the noise that keeps us from hearing God. And when we hear God's call, we are given a word to share with the world. That word may be to draw attention to the needs of the world beyond our own. That word may challenge the world as we do our best to love our neighbors as Jesus has shown us. That word we are given may indeed be God's good news, but it may sound like bad news to those with whom we share it. Isaiah's call was rather spectacular and fairly clear. He responded and used his voice to share God's word. And now we, the church, the body of Christ in this post-Pentecost world, are called to bear God's word. So how do we use our voices? And whose voices have been silenced or can't be heard over all the noises? And how can we amplify the good word they have to share? Are we looking around waiting for someone else to speak up or volunteer to bear that word or answer that call? Are you waiting for someone braver or more worthy or more willing to step up? Whether we hear it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, God is still calling. The voice of God still asks, whom shall I send? Whatever the setting or context, war, terrorism, economic meltdown, ecological crisis, the death of someone we love, a terminal prognosis, anxiety or depression, God is present, calling us to answer and giving us words to share. Picture it. Jerusalem. In the year of King Uzziah's death, Isaiah had an encounter with the divine, and he spoke God's prophetic word to God's people. Isaiah spoke out to people who did not want to hear what he had to say, but he said it anyway. What is your version of that? Picture it. Tucker, Georgia, 2021. In the year we emerged from the pandemics of COVID-19, unprecedented political and economic instability, and racial reckoning. I heard the voice of God asking, Whom shall I send? How will you answer? And now to the one who by the power at work within us, is able to do far more abundantly than all we can ask or imagine. To God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And now will you join me as we affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you are looking for a church home, we would love to have you join us at St. Andrews, officially through membership or just as part of our community. If you have questions about becoming a part of this community, please reach out to me and I'd be happy to talk to you about what it means 
to become a member of this church. Hope you all will check out our Facebook page, our website, and our weekly email for information about our regular online gatherings for study, nurture, and fellowship, as well as upcoming in-person gatherings. In your prayers, please do remember those on the prayer list that we send out to our worshiping community, especially those recovering from surgery or recent hospitalizations, those grieving, and those facing the death of those they love. We celebrate with all those graduating from graduate school, college, and high school, eighth graders who survived middle school and who are moving on to high school, fifth graders moving on up to middle school, and preschoolers moving up to kindergarten. We celebrate and give thanks for the teachers and parents and administrators who adapted and found ways to get these resilient students through another year of school. On this holiday weekend that we fill with celebrations of the unofficial beginning of summer, we also remember those in our military who died while serving our country. And we give thanks for those who are still serving. While wars still rage and we cling to the tenuous ceasefire agreements, we continue to keep those in the Middle East and others in areas of violent conflict in our prayers. So let us join together in prayer. O Blessed Trinity, we praise you as Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer of our world and the cosmos beyond. We remember that we did not receive a spirit of fear, but a spirit of adoption that allows us to call you Abba, Father. We believe that your love is stronger than our fear. You invite us into the biggest story there is, the old, old story of your love for the world that is renewed each and every morning. While your identity as three persons is a mystery, We know the terrible realities of violence and suffering. As our nation remembers our dead, we place our faith and hope in the vision that nations shall not make war against one another. We praise you for the grace of being called as children of God. We ask for the courage to say, here I am, to live into our calling and for our hearts and minds to be opened to your spirit in our place and time, including by the empowerment of others. We pray for healing and wholeness from the pandemics of COVID-19, white supremacy, and climate change. We pray for those who can't breathe due to air pollution and oppression. We pray that your church through truth and reconciliation, will join together across divisions and divides to exhibit the diversity and unity that is your gracious intention. Spirit of the living God, move again in our time like a breath of fresh air, giving life and liberty. Make us instruments of your peace and harmony. Through spiritual disciplines and acts of contemplation, kindle our holy imaginations and guide us into ministries of healing and wholeness. For you, O holy three-in-one, are in relationship with your own self. May your children be led by the Spirit to be in right relationship with one another. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we pray the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, through the Trinity, God has blessed us with more than we could ever give in return. Our response should 
Neither be in fear nor compulsion, but out of gratitude and gladness for the grace given by the one who so loves the world. If you would like to contribute a financial gift to St. Andrews, you can do so by mailing a check to the church or through online giving at sapctucker.org. There's a link at the bottom of that front page. Now let us worship God with our offering as we sing together. Let us pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord Almighty, may our gifts and offerings praise you and bring grace to your world. Make us instruments of your peace, for you are merciful and mighty. To God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we pray. Amen. God said, Whom shall I send and who shall go for us? And Isaiah said, Here I am, send me. Life-giving God, free us from our fear and fill us with your love. And now go out into the world to live your hopes and not your fears, knowing that you are held in holy hands that will never let you go. Alleluia. Amen. And now, after our benediction in music, you are invited to join us over in Zoom in our virtual narthex for a time to share peace and fellowship with one another. And so as we prepare to carry our worship into the world, let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
and also with you. Go in peace. Thank you.